Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hardcore Heroes. <clears throat> Hello. 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 Again, not sure if you're talking to us there or the audience. Um, I'm kind of talking to them. Okay. But when we first come, you're talking to us. No, I'm still talking to them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Can I just say before we start, one of the nice parts, like it's nice not being in that hellhole of a dorm, but also I don't have all my D&D &D books when I'm in the dorms. I can't read all of my copies of the Encyclopedia <gasps> Magica. These Whoa. might be the best four books I've ever bought in my life. What is that? It's just literally four books, hundreds of pages each, filled with magical items. Wow. Literally like a dictionary for magical items. Yeah, the brown book goes like A through, what is it, D? And then the next book does the next set of letters and the next set it's insane, and a lot of these magic items there have a table that you can take this property, or this property, or this property, or this property, or this property, and there's like yeah. ten different kinds of healing potions, and... That's for the part, you can use them for inspiration and not even use the actual item itself. And Is there's it for two or...? Yep. Yeah. There's it's also nice. randomization gonna, yeah. tables in the back that are pages long that you roll D1000s on to roll magic items. Mm -hmm. Those are the best. Mm -hmm. I love generation tables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. Anywho. All right, so and we find Croak at the stable. Do we yeah. know? Okay, Looking over so horses. Come, in, come into the stable. Croak, did you manage to find yourself a, a nag? You know, I, I just don't think that it's going to work. I, I tend to be of a rather Im impressive girth, and uh, these horses need to be able to carry that around at top speeds. And, and unfortunately, despite the uh, great help that this uh, this uh, Mr. Neil, the stable master here, he, he helped me quite a bit, but it just won't work out. Well, I think I'm going to have to change... Uh, am I to believe that you are too heavy for a horse? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Well, well, hold I've on. seen men in full place armor riding horses, Crook. But they don't ride them very fast. Mm. It's... One thing, when I said that we may want to consider getting mounts, I may have misspoke. We could simply just buy a mule or a donkey, something to carry our supplies for us, so that we can carry extra provisions on the road. We can still walk. It just... I mean, if that's what you want to do, go by, by all means. What, what I intended was to get something fast so I could get back to Redport rather quickly. As I said, me and Malachi do have some business to attend to there. Uh, but I think that I might just need to find a way to put that off so that we have time to thoroughly investigate these missing taxes. I have a spell that could potentially allow you to send a raven. Um, Actually, grab let, me, spell for me. Yeah, let me double check to see exactly how specific it is as to how well I can control them. Is it for a basic horse deal, is that 75? I believe so. For a riding horse? This is not an issue. I can buy all the horses. Okay, so the spell is, this spell enables the priest to call upon a, a tiny sized creature of at least animal intelligence to act as his messenger. Does not affect giant animals and doesn't work on creatures of low IE5 intelligence or higher. Uh, if the creature is within range, the priest using some type of food desirable to the animal's allure can call the animal to come. Uh, allow to save and throw versus spell. If it's failed, the animal advances toward the priest and awaits his bidding. Communicate with the animal in crude fashion, telling it to go to a certain place, but directions must be simple. Spellcaster can attach some small item or note to the animal. What's the duration? Or uh, range? Duration, one day per level. Hmm. You're level four. Yeah, so it would, I think the one downside to that is if you're, are you just trying to reach those kids? Yeah. It'd be the kind of, where I could send like a letter to a castle, right? Yeah. Like, you have to give it very simple directions. Like, you know how you could have sent that letter to Hillsborough for me and didn't? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I think I'll just go with a messenger van. I, that is quite a trick. We should keep that in mind, but, uh, I, I'll, I'll find I'll find a way to get in touch with him. I will make the charm spells useful one of these days. <laughs> God, uh, sometimes I wish I had just gone for a little bit more power gaming and chosen Martha as my uh, deity, but fuck it, whatever. I like Cheese a lot better. Yeah, I Jesus actually like how it's gone, role play wise. So I'm looking at the horses, Croak Van. I mean, I, I could get behind the idea of a horse. I think I could cast a spell off of the back of a standing horse. I say, to the air. If, if the, the horse is still still, I could cast. I could cast right. Yeah, if, as long as it's not moving. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I mean, these are options. I, th I think one thing we should consider right now is that it might not be the best purchase from Hillsboro, where we have lots of s steep, sloped, and rocky terrain to travel. travel. Maybe this when we get back to Redford, it'd be a better idea. I ask the stable master if there's a kennel master. Scooby number two. Scooby Mark two. 
Well, we just get most of our dogs from Clydesdale. They got good kennels there, good stables too. Mobile I mean, these stables are fan them. fantastic, but you know, Clydesdale is Clydesdale for name reason. Thank you, uh, Neil. I shall. Uh, I'll speak to someone in Clydesdale. Mm -hmm. This guy's name is Neil, right? It's been christened. Yeah, done. It's been christened, sir. Right, cool. <laughs> okay. All of my well, NPCs uh, sound like croak. I can't. I can't stop doing it. It's infectious. Yeah, You're very welcome. I guess that's like the common accent around these parts. Yeah, the, the that's lower classes. Decided, right? It's the peasant accent. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I grow restless in town. I feel, I feel we should get some work done. Shall we um, begin our investigations? Sure, Neil. Where can we buy an elephant? <laughs> um, far away in the elven lands. <laughs> Probably. There are... Can we take a look at the world map? I don't think we have a world map in Rural 20. Um, okay, if you look at Hillsborough and you go west from there, you reach this great and vast plains. I believe there are elephants that are over there. Um, and if not, I think there are elephants in the Tether Wilds. Okay, so... We'd have, we'd have to like find one in the wilds and then find a way. To uh, it. no, there are some towns that will have elephants for riding and things. Um, you wouldn't find one out here in Wake County, but if you go west of Hillsborough, there's some towns out there like Plainsview. It's northwest from there. You might be able to find elephants in Plainsview, uh, and I think north there's Weatherlight and Heatstroke, and those places might also have elephants for sale. Rarely, if you make your way all the way out to Fortune, the capital of uh, flat County, you can definitely find elephants for sale. Okay. I, I don't think they'll necessarily help us here, but if we got like a war elephant sometime in the future, we could probably just devastate the countryside with it. Yes, but they're expensive. They re eat that's a why, that's lot of food. Future. Yeah. We're far into we the could be fat Alibaba, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe we should check in with the, uh, the alchemist. Oh, uh, I so I, I asked Krog, Krog if he's okay with that deal, fifty gold per uh, per antidote. I don't. I say I don't. Like I have some gold, but I can't. We I, need I, to I go out today it. anyway, and he's doubt, it's doubtful that he'd complete the antidotes, the anti venom, before we want to set out anyway. Hmm. We could always. Perhaps we should just go collect it from him. He said he put it in a container for us. The venom. Yeah, we might as well go and get that. <coughs> Maybe I think they have alienated him slightly. Hmm. Um. I don't. I don't really know if it's necessary or not. Um, I, if he if he can complete them for the three of us, perhaps. I mean, well, I wouldn't require one. Huh? Yeah. Here, here's my issue with this. Uh, speaking strictly in game terms here, like out of character, if Greg gets bit and he fails his poison save, he dies. Yep. Which is my yeah. biggest concern here. Like, I can pa I can fail one save and survive. That's why I think the horses might be a good idea. I think a I mean, spot I'm still is low on health. Attack. If I get bit, I probably just die from the bite. Hmm. Uh, like I have seven health. Like there's a real chance a bite just kills me. Oh yeah. By the way, I cast a healing spell on me and a healing spell on Croak today. Forgot to mention that because we memorize spells and I always mm -hmm. take two healing spells as my like normal number of spells for a day. Roll them. Which one goes to who first? Uh, I'll do me first, then Croak. So four to me, two to Croak. Hmm, maybe, maybe going out searching in the hills with Croak in such a fragile position. We, we could wait until, uh, until tomorrow. Give it one more I mean, day. my max health, guys, is 12. Yeah, it's still going to kill you. I have no health. There will never be a time when Croak traveling from town to town is not potentially the last time we ever see Croak, right? Here's well, a random encounter in which we don't get initiative first, and there's a real chance Croak just dies. To look, why don't we why don't we hire some uh, mercenaries to come with us out into the hills? I'd feel here, safer in a group. Here, here's, I think we might just want to not fuck with these spiders. But Neil, when we looked at the like, they ran away from us, right? We chased them off with torches, and they ran like they bolted for it. Yeah. How fast were they? Were they faster than us? Ah. They. Scuttled away and then climbed a wall. Yeah. 
I'm looking up. I'm wondering, spiders, like, man. when I saw it run away from me, would it have moved faster than I could have run away from it? I think because so. I don't want to kill those spiders at this point. I think that's a big risk to the party. I'd rather just scout it out and see if that's like the likely cause oh. of these disappearing. Right. No, these spiders were super fast. Um, okay. If we, uh, if you watch rewatch that episode, I think they ha they were at a really big distance and yeah. closed it and attacked in a single round. You were surprised at how fast they were. Because we saw them, and yet they still kind of got on us before we could do anything to prepare. By the time we saw them, they were like on the cliff side right next to us. Maybe so I'm, I'm going to give a different game. Just go do it, right? Malachi's immune. You can survive one, right? If I get bit right no, now. No, no. Let us, uh, let, let's head to the local taverns and seek to hire some mercenaries out. If this uh, bounty right. that we can uh, achieve is so great, then a few gold here to hire a few men to attack some spiders for us is just short change. One thing worth noting, if we develop a reputation for hiring mercenaries whenever we suspect that people are going to die, people will very quickly want to stop signing on as our mercenaries. I mean, well, the last I mean, mercenaries we hired didn't die. Yeah, and I mean, isn't that the point of a mercenary? You wouldn't We're hire We're adding a thousand percent. Look, let's, uh, let's go and see what, who we can find. So I take a walk around the town and look for the tavern that's got, you know, the most rowdy kind of... Uh, you know, group of people surrounding it. All right. You definitely come across a rowdy, rowdy tavern. I had success with this last time, so I'm going to go in and uh, I'm going to give some looks to people, sort of like if anyone stares me down as I walk in, I hold my gaze and I walk towards the back of the room and find the table I can find. All right. Um... What's the name of this tavern? Uh, this tavern's name is the Pig Bucket. Okay. The Pig Bucket. All right, yeah. so I've got my hood up. I sit down in this table, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll grab a bartender and get a drink if someone comes over to take an order. Mm -hmm. And I sit there for maybe 20 minutes and eyeing up the crowd and trying to identify armored men. Uh, there's definitely some folks in here in armor. You see a party of three dwarves all clad in chain mail with battle axes at their sides. They are and heavily big, armored. Dwarves yeah. are uh, resistant to poison, right? I know this. Yes. So I, uh, I, the three dwarves seem like a good choice, so I try and uh, catch their eye. Um, they're pretty oblivious to everything around them. You spend five minutes trying to catch their eye, and even when they look past you, they completely miss your you know, attempts to get their attention. Okay. I put my uh, my magic candle on the on the table in front of me, mm -hmm. and the next time that one of their gazes crosses to me, I'll click my fingers and light it up. Ooh, clever! Um, the dwarf stops and looks at you, and then I give him a you know a come here motion. He elbows his friend and obviously points to you in your candle and says, in what maybe was supposed to be a whisper, but you can actually slightly overhear from where you're standing. That guy there just snapped his fingers and a candle lit. Beckoned over to us. You think we should talk to... Oh, you don't speak Dwarven. All right, he no, says some shit in Dwarven that you don't know. Okay. Um, but it's kind of loud and kind of and very obvious. The other dwarves so all kind of but nod their heads and grumble to each other and then get up and uh, start coming over to you. Okay, I, uh, I pull out the candle and place it back in my robes as they sit down. Neat trick, says the first one. Thank you, well, I had to catch your attention somehow. Hmm. A few friends of mine are uh, thinking about heading out into the hills on a dangerous mission. And if danger is present, who better than dwarves to accompany me? Ah. Are you a uh, man with a sensible head? What sort of dangerous mission is this? Well... I don't know how much you know about the, this town. I only recently arrived, but from what I hear, there are all sorts of dangers in the hills. Aye. Great well, many. For something. Uh, for the sake. Sorry, are we here with you, Malachi? I don't think so, but you can be. I, I didn't uh, actively if, leave on my own. That's, that's fine. I say, uh, we're looking for something in particular. It could take an hour, it could take a day or two. I'd you after to... the... The missing taxes, too? Ah. Just about everyone in town is. 
Hmm. Well, why aren't you out there already looking for it yourself? See, now the way I see it, it's a dangerous mission, one that might not pay off. You're going to give your life for something that might not net you any gold. But here, I can offer you a different deal. Now, if we find the taxes, the reward is mine to claim, but I will pay you handsomely for your involvement, and that way you can be guaranteed to return with something. What if we don't find any taxes? Well, then you still get your pay. Honest day's page for a honest day's labor. So, hmm. do they look like they might be first level fighters, Neil, or do they look more impressive? Uh, they look like they... Well, you don't know. Okay, well, I'll, I'll say uh, a gold a day for each of you. Three gold a day. They look at each other and say, oh, we don't do business. We don't seal business until we've had a chance to discuss it over drinks. Very well, I'll... Uh, they stand up and we'll... pat the table and give you like a, we'll be right back, sort of hand wave. What was the... Was it this the tavern we were in last night? Uh, no. You were okay. in a different tavern. So they go away. I'll they wait. go away. Yeah, yeah. Um, they huddle together and talk in loud whispers that if you spoke Dwarven, you could probably overhear. Um, in the meantime, Croak, is there anything that you want to do in town? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go find me a messenger. Right. Like a messenger service. <clears throat> yeah, you find a guy. Uh, a, a service, I should say. All right. I say, hey, it will... Unfortunately, the man I usually use to run my business is already out, and I'm in need of a message to arrive in Redport uh, about eight days from now. Uh, do you have a secure messenger that can do this for me? Absolutely, sir. Our messengers are the fastest and the most reliable. They'll get your message wherever it needs to go. Rain excellent, or shine. Excellent. Well, um... There's uh, two business folk of mine that uh, are to meet me at uh, Redport at this spot, and I describe it um, in detail, and I say they're going to be meeting me on the eight days from now at about noon. I'd like him to be there and uh, deliver a message uh, to, the, to the two of them, uh, telling them that I have been held up on a prior engagement and shall be returning a bit later. Um, if they would meet me back in the same spot uh, five days hence, um, and then give them this package um, and say uh, theirs for uh, showing up um, and a uh, good faith gesture on my part uh, so that I will be there uh, for the next meeting. Of course. Um, and I hand them a pouch. And I, I, it's sealed up, but inside of it is uh, 10 gold coins. Cool. Uh, and how will my man know your contacts? Um, I'm going to describe them uh, without saying they're orphans or whatever, but like uh, they're actually going to be uh, two uh, young men. Uh, they'll be wearing, I described their kind of like rundown clothes a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they do some, some good labor for me, and unfortunately I won't be there to direct them. Yeah, he doesn't bat an eye at your description of these impoverished street urchins. Um, <laughs> he seems to take it all uh, and goes, okay, and do you have anything... To let them know you are uh, our messenger is a man of yours. Will they be needing verification? You know, I I, I do not know that uh, you you could you could tell them that uh, that uh, Croco sent your man and uh, you you know give my description if need be. Uh, they they're young, but they should they should understand the the concept. Very well, sir. Uh, Redport <laughs> is two and a half days away. For our fast horsemen, and at a rate of five silver a day, that it comes to twenty-five silver. Excellent, excellent. I hand him uh, three gold, and I say, uh, keep the change uh, as an insurance. Thank you. Um, he jots all this down on a piece of paper, um, shakes your hand, and then uh, goes and finds a very lightweight jockey to take the horse. All right. Um, back in the bar, yeah. Malachi, the three dwarves come back to you slowly but surely. They say, all right. We'll take the job. On one condition. Go on. 
minimum three days employment, cash up front. I can't give you the cash up front. You, I think you realize that. I can give you half. They nod. All right, I'll give them five gold now. Okay. So I have them another four. And I've got them for three days, right? Right. Three gold each. Three days. Yeah, Sorry, three one times three is nine. Right. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. right, well, uh, I hope you're sober enough, because I think we'll be heading out soon. <laughs> Whoever heard of a drunken dwarf? I look, I look them up and down. What kind of... Do they all have the same armor and equipment? Yes, they're all wearing chainmail with battle axes. Um, okay. No the shield. The one who was speaking the most to me is mm -hmm. the, the one in particular. I say, uh, what is your name? Redbeard. For well, the obvious Red. reasons. Well, Redbeard, you seem like a trustworthy dwarf to me. When we're out there in the plains, stick by my side. You two can, you know, work towards whatever objective is there at the time, but I'll need personal protection from Redbeard here. Personal bodyguard, got it. All right, let's go. Follow me. I lead them out and head back to the RN looking for Croak and Van. Okay. The whole party is reconvened. Malachi has three dwarves in tow. Uh, oh, hello. Oh, no, Greg, you're muted again. Neil, no. is, is it kind of like a common stereotype in this world that dwarves are, like, greedy and they tend to have, like, a very sort of one-track mind when it comes to gold, or is that just a Tolkien stereotype? I think that's just going to be a, a Tolkien stereotype. Okay. Um, dwarves are interested in metals and metal working, and so maybe they are perceived as greedy because they have a desire for these metals, but it's usually out of a, a desire to work them. Okay. I think dwarves being greedy is a stereotype like blondes being dumb. You know, it's not okay. really true, but, you know. Yeah. That, that makes more sense. I think it was the rings of power that made them greedy yeah. in the first place, so. Yeah. yeah. Greg, can you talk it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, look, I brought us some new friends. Seems that I'm becoming quite a friend of the dwarves. Did excellent. You know excellent. I drank one of your folk under the table last night. Bullshit! That never happened. I mean, I well, uh, gold off it. If you saw it with their own eyes. I'll show you when we return quite to town. A strong liver. Drink you under the table as well. Perhaps Never tonight, gonna tonight. happen. Perhaps tonight we can have another contest. If we return from our uh, our mission successful back to the tavern, I shall uh, I shall buy a little drinks and maybe you'll give me a chance to win my gold back. Or you could earn more. But a tale for another day. Let's uh let's head out, shall we? Croak, meet my dwarven friends here. This is Redbeard, and I can only assume Brownbeard and Brownbeard the second. <laughs> <laughs> like I smile is... at them and give them a, a, a small bow. An honor to meet you all. Now, uh, are we all ready to go? I'm, I'm itching to, to get out and get this underway. Yes, let's leave. I'll just and, and this is Van Helsing. He is a, a cleric from my hometown. Yeah, Van gives a very sort of polite, formal bow. Uh, they eye you with at first what seems to be suspicion. But they all seem to kind of... They're, they're looking at you like, is he cleric? Mm -hmm. I mean, and I after, like my... after looking at you for a while, seeing the proper holy symbols yeah. and your posture and your composure, they give you a, a grudging nod. Well, the sun rises high in the sky. Let us uh, make haste. Where to? Well, uh, well, I've paid you enough gold. What, what do you think? Do you know any more other than the fact that this uh, this car went missing along the road? I suppose we should head to Clydesdale and turn off into the hills. What kind of creatures do you think might have an interest in platinum? Aside well, from the obvious. There's only three creatures out there that would have any sort of care for platinum. For coins of any kind. You got your ogres. You got your hobgoblins. And, well, you just got your ogres and your hobgoblins, actually. Oh, good. Just I the two. For a minute, you're gonna say and dragons. 
Giants do not care for gold? I suppose not. I suppose not. There there are dragons nearby. Uh, well, Hydroxis lives out off the coast, but he wouldn't attack a car, I don't think. And if he did, people would have seen that coming. I mean, he's got the big wings. He flies. It, it would I be assume, known. I assume these carts are usually... Go. Let us hope we never run into a dragon. Mm. I assume these carts are usually well defended, would they not? I don't particularly know. They don't tell us when the carts are leaving that are carrying the tax dollars. Makes it I too easy of a target. Look, I would I imagine that if you were to rob a cart, doing it out in the plains kind of near Clydesdale would be a suicide mission because there would be nowhere to hide said cart. Yes. If it's a monster, it has to have a lair somewhere nearby, or if it's bandits or the like, then they same same thing. They're going to have a, a camp of some kind. The place to hide that would be in the hills, so I would be mm. inclined to investigate the hills along the roadsides um, in search Indeed. of perhaps, uh, hopefully, very hopefully, just a few men that have decided to turn to banditry. And at worst case scenario, uh, I guess giants. With very um, swords. My point was that uh, I'm sure these caravans are well protected. Whoever has stolen the taxes was able to defeat what I can only imagine was at least five men at arms, perhaps more. Well, that's if you think the taxes were the target. Now, me and my buddies here, we got a, a separate notion running through our head. Speak. He's, well, if it was just the tax cart hit, that makes plenty of sense. But it ain't been. Been a whole bunch of wagons, and only the wagons, tacked on that day of road. There were plenty of things attacking other travelers. We can attest to that personally. I feel like a group of hobgoblins, a group of ogres, they attack travelers on the road in the hopes to steal whatever riches they may be carrying. They happen to come across a cart with thousands of platinum in it, and they're certainly going to take that as well. Uh-huh. How well guarded was that tax wagon? I don't rightly know. As I said, they don't... They don't announce when the tax wagons are leaving. And this one... They say it was carrying platinum. Now you, platinum's worth ten gold pieces. You can carry ten times less gold if you're carrying platinum. Makes it a might easier to sneak Steal. by. It doesn't have quite the same, you know, deep wagon ruts and the same jingling noise. It's all very convenient for the thief. Mm-hmm. You Perhaps don't it's... suspect foul play at the higher levels, do you? Well, it's wise to keep one, one's mind open. Perhaps uh, we should head out onto the road and see if we can come across any clues. Fair enough. We're not getting anything get done it. here by sitting around talking. Yeah. Theory crafting won't get us anywhere in the in the long run. Aye, aye, Captain. All right, let's go. We'll head out onto the roads. From the map, Neil, it looks like the majority of the hills are to the south of the road, right? Yes. Okay, so we can just head south and... Uh, this is the same day that I healed Crook and I, right? Yes. Okay. So three. Yeah. Okay. You guys head out. Um, and so your plan is just to hop on the road and then head south? Well, I want to... I want to check out the hillsides around the road, right? So maybe instead of following the road, we kind of do a snake pattern around in the hills because mm. I think it far more likely to find the lair or the camp or whatever has the, the carts that have been hauled off or the goods in them than it is to just get attacked by whoever was doing it and then realize that that was them and then get a yay. Agreed. Okay. So what I suggest is that we follow the road out of town for a mile and then kind of snake our way back and forth investigating the hills, looking for signs of layers and or whatnot. And yeah, go from there. You a large perception of... Sides around the road. And if it's nothing, then maybe we change tactics. 
if we approach the lair of a hobgoblin or ogre group, you know, we'd probably see signs of it well before we actually saw the lair itself. So, keep potentially, it potentially so not. But hopefully, we do it in a way that we can at least quickly beat the hasty retreat if we run into like nine giants. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. So you head out into the hills and start looking about. Um, let's make some dice rolls. Should we have Croak go a little bit ahead of the party, like moving silently to see if he can stumble upon anything ahead of us? He moves silently at one third his movement rate, so that would be pretty slow going. I don't but think that do so it. much, but I do think that Croak is a proficient tracker, so maybe Croak is like five or ten feet ahead of the party, like checking the ground for signs of specific tracks. Maybe he can identify what we would be walking into beforehand. Maybe, um,. I'll carry a, a torch as well. How long does a torch last? Just an hour. Uh, I think it's about 30 minutes. 30 minutes? I mean, Do you have a lantern? Daylight, yeah. Yes, it's daylight. I just want to try to scare away any spiders or other random oh. monsters that may wish to attack us. It might be, we're in a bigger group now, so we, we should be more threatening, but anything else That's we can clever. do. To... Malachi, how many, uh, how many torches do you have? Just two. Could I have one of them? It might be helpful to have two people carrying a torch instead of just one. Agreed. Here, yeah. right, I'll hand you a torch. Change it on the character sheets, please. Yeah. Yep. I can't remember to buy a small mirror, small everything, but I forget about torches. How light is it out in the sky now? It's daylight. Uh, it is a clear sky. Maybe a few clouds on the horizon, but a nice, right. beautiful, bright day. No need for my um, my stuff then. No. Okay. Well, I mean, I accompany the party, keep an eye out on the ground, but... Uh, my money's on Croak to lead this investigation. Okay. Croak, you crest one of the hills out there. And we're talking, these are like large hills, right? They're 100, 200 feet high and hundreds of feet wide. You know, it takes a, while, a long while to hike up them and hike down them. Is it possible to, instead of walking up and down and up and down every hill, to kind of go between them? Yeah, you can find areas where it's a little bit you don't have to get get quite the elevation, but there are still times where you have to trek up a thing or around a thing. Um, it might be smart to trek up anyways. If something decides to chase us and it's further down, it would have to climb uphill and we could just go straight down. Yeah, and when you get to tops of hills, you can walk along the ridge and then drop back down. It all depends on where you want to go, but it's a, you know. We're... Basically, I want to do this in the like most efficient way possible, right? right. So, like, if it's going around hills, is going faster, or if I need to get up and see a little bit. But, like, I this is this is kind of my element, right? My mm -hmm. background is in hunting and tracking. So, like, I want to do this efficiently, quickly, and, like, with not wasted efforts. Absolutely. So, at one point, you are going up a hill, and you get to the top of it, and see down in the valley on the other side of the hill are six... Well, you've seen hobgoblins before, so six hobgoblins. But unlike the naked ones with crude spears you met on that small little island these hobgoblins are well armed and armored um, it looks like they're wearing some sort of leather and metal armors maybe like a mix between things you've got like looks like stolen bits from various people that have been put together and they are carrying uh, axes and swords as well as a few javelins Looks Does like... it seem like they're traveling the hills, or are they kind of no? You know, like uh, they are standing around, and it looks like there are some corpses beneath them. This is maybe two hi two valleys over from the road. So you like went up or went around a hill, and then went up a hill, and on the next side down, you see a bunch of corpses. Well, I kind of make a, a motion towards the group, like stop, and then like I point at Van and Malachi, and I'm like, come hither. Okay. Okay. How far away are they now? They are down the hill, which must be like 80 feet down and 300 feet over, or 400 okay. feet over. It's it's pretty far. Van starts to uh, he like takes his bow out just in case it's gonna be needed. I put my hand on your bow and like yeah. like I don't I don't knock it or anything. I'm just like I have it okay. in hand in case we need it. I whisper to y'all. Now, I look down there. I don't see their camp. I don't see any gold or carts or goods, but it's quite possible hobgoblins could be behind this. What do you say we follow them around a little bit for today and see if they don't lead us to where 
the goods were taken, see if we can't identify that these are, in fact, the ones we're looking for. Sure. Perhaps you should take a bit of a larger distance. People like me tend to clink in armor a little bit. If I follow too close, I may alert them to our presence. I wouldn't suspect we want to follow them too close, but we can use the distance of the hills and the vantage point to kind of keep an eye on them as they move. We can watch them for a while. If they do move, we can follow them, but I find it unlikely we'll be able to stay hidden while keeping them in sight. Don't you think? One Six member might, be, might have a better chance. Let's yeah. If you say croak, take a bit of a larger lead. You can always alert us if you suspect trouble. We'll come running to you. All right. I, uh, I'll, you notice the... I, I am a bit more fleet of foot than uh, than the rest of y'all. Uh, keep a uh, keep about a hundred feet. Keep bow range if you can. Um, well. And uh, I will follow them as as quietly as possible and try to figure out where they're going. We're going to. They're just standing still, though, right? Um, I, I do want to note, just as a side, that the dwarves have disregarded your orders have, and have marched up next to you. Okay. Um, I think we're all a little bit under the hill at this point, so we don't right. need to continue to look at the hobgoblins. Um, the, the hobgoblins seem to have a lot of gear on their backs, including what looks to be like maybe tents or something. Uh -huh. um, and they seem to be standing around, not like encircling the bodies, but standing near the bodies in a, a formation. The bodies look human? The bodies look humanoid. Ah, actually, you've got good vision, and they're not that far. Yeah, they look human. Look, let's watch them for a bit. If they don't move, I think we should attack them. There could be clues down there. We might be able to take one of them alive. I think it could be quite easily done. With the bodies down there, they might be responsible for some of these disappearances. Or they could exactly. be scavengers. They may well, uh, if we decide to attack them, I want to make sure we get the jump on them as best as possible. Um, how would you suggest going about it? Because I feel like if we just charge down the hill, that's not going to go too much in our favor. If you want to attack now, our best bet would be to shoot at them. Yeah, we, we take range attacks. The when Do they get in range. you have magics or some kind that could Heal. hold them or prevent them from fleeing or alerting others? Like, I, I feel as if just pulling out our bows and shooting them might right. not be in our best interest. Are there grasses in this sort of area where they're down, where they're standing? It's Is there like right. plants and grasses? There, there's not a lot in the way of grass, but there are shrubs and bushes. Does it look suitable for an entangle spell? Is kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah, I okay. think if someone is standing is well positioned, they will be not close enough to anything to be entangled. But most, if you're trying to get anywhere, you'll have to squeeze through some bushes at some point. Okay. Um, yeah. In that case, I say. I could cast a spell preemptively. We could try to kill all but one, force the last to surrender. I've seen you work some crazy magics between the two of you. Uh, I just I feel that uh, if we're going to attack them now, it needs to be quick, and we need to find some way to gain the upper hand, right? Trust me, Croak, I felt more deadly than I do this day. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear it, Mr. Malachi. I say I could open by entangling them, and we could shoot at whoever manages to um, manages to break through their bonds and escape the field. We could shoot at them first. Mr. Sure uh, Redbeard, Brownbeard, Brownbeard the second. Uh, do you all have any bows, slings, missile weapons, or are you more of a close quarter sort? Dwarves are men of action. We stand in the front lines and beat our enemies to death. I've heard as much. Uh, my girlfriend says that many a time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they look at each other well, and kind of smile. And look anyway, back at if uh, I have seen Van pull this trick before, uh, if you charge down close to them in the entangling vines, they will get you as well. I would uh, suggest waiting here and guarding the hill for any who come charging toward us. So, yes, uh, that was what I was about to suggest, is uh, you guys form a perimeter here. There may be some that do not quite get in captured, and then we'll pick them off with bows and finish off whatever's the rest at, rain, at, uh, at melee if the spell wears out. I understand the need to search for glory, but sometimes it's best to play safe with one's life, my dwarven friends. I find it's better to fight with your head than with your heart. Or if you must, run in there and get tangled up by weeds and bushes. It, it won't be the first time our friends have done that. It's true. You will still be able to attack. You simply won't be able to move. 
<sighs> Magic. <laughs> Trust us, friends. Let's uh, just hold the line. Stay up here on top of the hill. Let you rain fire down on the enemies. <laughs> All right, by all means, charge in and kill him. Let's do this. I... No, no, no. We, well, we follow orders. Bon, no one ever said a dwarf was stupid. Uh, the range of the spell? It, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's more than 80 feet. I mean, but they're actually 300 feet away and 80 feet down, right? Neil. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, let me double check the spell. Brain. This plant, I think. Yeah, entangle. The range is 80 yards. So, oh, so that's 240 to, feet. Yeah, a little bit further. Okay. Can we sneak within range, Neil, without being obvious? I could, no. Yeah, I, as long as we have surprise, I could run up and cast the spell in the first round of surprise. Yeah, that's true. You could do it in one round. So if we've got surprise from over the side of the hill, you could run in, cast it, and we could start fighting. That sounds like the plan. Dwarves, follow Van. Redbeard, stay by my side. Um... Before you do that, we should move within bow range. We would be shooting with a penalty from this far. I think we should cast the spell first. I don't think we yeah. can move closer without being sighted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just cast the spell. Run no. forward, cast the spell, then we can move down the hill and start firing. All right. Do your thing. All right. So it's just like the hobgoblin, five hobgoblins at the bottom of the hill? Six. 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 Okay. We all keep Man, together. Six. Yeah. Man, we'll like, the party has back is gonna like crest the hill, then run down until he's in range to cast it on the group of hobgoblins. Okay, and why don't we hop into that on the other side of our break? See you guys in a few minutes. Bye bye. Well, we get ambushed by the eight hobgoblins waiting for travelers. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. All right. <laughs>